Welcome everyone. It is a new Sunday evening and we are honored that God has woken us up to be here today and we're privileged amongst many that hasn't woke up today. And so that is just a reminder from God that he still have work to do us. And so I'm just excited to be here. I'm fortunate to be alive and in the presence of God knowing that you know each day is an opportunity to um, draw closer to him and so we just want to welcome each and every person who is here today um we welcome you in the mighty and precious name of jesus we pray that you had a wonderful week um and we pray that the spirit of god continue to abide with you no matter where you are no matter what you're facing um, we know that life um, can sometimes be challenging. One of the things we need to re be reminded about is that God did not say we would not have tribulations, but rather he will always be with us in the midst of our tribulations. And so I encourage you this evening, um, no matter what time zone that you're in right now, that the spirit of God, who is heavy on each and every life, if you open your heart and allow him to come in, he will abide in you and he will give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. And so we're just grateful that we are alive and we can feel that even when we don't know that God is real, there's just certain things that reminds us that he is alive and he is here. We have no explanation sometimes about how we're here how we came about to be here, what purpose we're here, and yet here we are. And so to know that even without, without no knowledge of much, right, we're still alive, we're still well, and we're still provided for. And so that is just something that God reminds me on a day-to-day -day basis, just how to learn to be grateful of the unknown as well as the known. So I just want to encourage each and every one of you to allow the Holy Spirit to be with you no matter what you're facing to know that he is directing and orchestrating um, everything even when it looks like it's bad God has a way of turning that into good so welcome again we're about to get started this is a Bible study so we just want to remind you that we um, want you to be a part. We want to welcome you to come together with us to fellowship, to basically exercise the word of God that is in your heart, in your spirit. Um, and the only way to do that is if you join in with us, not just partake in watching the replays or partake in watching from the background, but rather come together with us and speak from your heart and allow that, allow God to just speak through you and ask questions and that way, we never know who God is speaking to or the revelations where it's going to come from sometime. But if you are disposal, if you're seeking, you shall find. And so coming together allow us to do that together. Um, and it helped us also to um, hear something that God may not have revealed to us as well. So we invite you to, to come together with us live so that we can um, fellowship in this Bible study together. Uh, so just click on the link, which I'm going to be sharing in the Facebook group. But if you're watching the replay, that's perfectly okay. Um, but in the future, just know that we will leave the link for you so that you know where to go next time. So anyways, welcome once again to each and every person. And now we're going to get into prayer and then get into the word for, um, for today. Um, and also whatever testimony that we that you guys have, this is your opportunity to share. Uh, Pastor, did you wanna pray and then we can get into testimony? I can- You, you hear me? Mm-hmm. Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for the life that you have given us. 
We thank you for Yeshua who came in this world to set us free from the condemnation that was upon us. We thank you that today every one of us who trust and believe and listen to you have eternal life. And we all are free to follow your instruction. And above all, we all are your children. We thank you. We praise you. Manifest it yourself in us, around us, and direct us to be obedient to the spirit that you have given us. We thank you again. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. All right, so if anybody have any um, testimonies, opportunity to share now. If not, then we'll get into the word. Praise the Lord, everyone. Uh, everyone has some testimony. I, I believe I have a word I would share with everyone. <clears throat> Can anybody hear me? I'm sorry. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. I'm a little groggy. Sorry, a little frog in my throat. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, just want to give God the glory and praise for another day. Um, and mm -hmm. just grateful for another Sunday and to share with you all. Uh, another day fellowship, amen. amen. Um, so I did, I had a brief word I'd like to share with everyone in um, the book of First John, chapter 4, the first epistle of John, <coughs> excuse me, chapter 4. Uh, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are God, because many false prophets are gone out of into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come into the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you, he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world and the world hears them. We are of God. Mm. He that knows God hears us. He that is not of God hears not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Mm. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is God, and everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. He that loves not, knows not God, but God is love. We'll stop here. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we seek the truth. We seek your understanding, we seek your knowledge. We ask that you will continue to share with us your wisdom and to open our minds and our spirits to know the truth. We mm honor -hmm. you, praise you, magnify your holy name. To this name we pray. Mm -hmm. Now, this. Uh, the, the the key verse here that John is writing is actually the first verse is beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit whether they are up because many false prophets are gone out into the world. 
now we I, I, I guess this it brought my attention mostly because of certain things that I find um, concerning is this is a message towards believers right he's not preaching he's not preaching to the to the outside world he's not preaching to uh, those who do not know. He says, we who believe, we are of God. He's speaking to us, right? In other words, when I say us, I, I imagine those of us who are listening, who have accepted that Jesus Christ is God, who have accepted the word of God. And that's what I mean by us. But I have to remind myself sometimes that I speak, that it's, it's always a natural thought to think that everyone who is listening believes in God. And that's that's not the case. And, and I think it is sometimes even those who may have an understanding of God have difficulty with certain things in the Bible and may not have a full spectrum. So we often are general speaking, but belief and belief is in general can vary. There are many of us who may have a belief in certain things and not other things. And so I think that's important that we are aware of how we speak in the essence of those of us who are trying to preach the word of God to acknowledge that everyone's understanding is different. Everyone's belief is different. But we hold on to the general belief that God is love, that Jesus is God. And that we believe that God, that Jesus was a man who walked on earth, who himself was God incarnate, and that he came to die for our sins. This is the overwhelming truth. That's the most important thing. And John says that, he says that in, uh, um, he, he that loves knows. I'm sorry, I'm looking for the part where he says, those of us who believe in Christ. And every spirit that confesses not, verse three, verse two, sorry. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Now this is a, this may seem like a simple concept, but the reality is that wasn't always the case. And as a matter of fact, in the beginning, it was very conflicted to say that Jesus was God. And there are many in today's, uh, um, there are many people today who don't necessarily take Jesus as God as the actual thing. As a matter of fact, in, my, in, in our understanding, we come from the, the thought of Trinity, which is to understand that God is in three persons. The original ideal is that there was a pop, there was a God of all things, there's the Holy Spirit, and then there's the third God, which would be Christ, which would be three different levels of God. And that belief is what I believed up until my adulthood, as a matter of fact, it is something of understanding that the set that there is levels of God. Um, that was an understanding that I think most people share, is that Christ and God were individuals, that God the Father and Christ the Son are individuals. They op they op occupy the throne, but they occupy the throne as a family, as a triunit. And the ideal of Trinity comes from a whole different religion that predates Christianity by thousands of years. But that is its own identity that became its own identity, and it found its way into into Christianity because that was the overwhelming thought of the land. Because in actuality, most uh, societies are fine with the ideal of a plurality, meaning that the ideal of that many gods is a hierarchy of gods. In almost every, every culture, there's the father god and then the children's, the sons of gods, right? And often these sons of God or daughters of God are rivals to each other and try to fight their father. This is what you read in ancient mythologies. We call it mythologies because intellectuals will call other stories of religion 
what they don't necessarily accept as myth. But if you understand all religion is a sort of, of, of mythology, then you acknowledge that everyone is its own version of religion. As a matter of fact, we find that Moses himself <clears throat> believed in the mythology before he became, um, when he, before he followed Jehovah. But he's from a school that followed that theology. And around Moses' time would be the time of Akhenaten and Amun and all these people who created the, the tri-god system, the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we can say elements of that thought, the, 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 the beginning of, <clears throat> sorry, the beginning of a monotheistic but tri-god version of monotheism which came from Egypt, was passed down to the deism. So the deism pretty much took on the monotheistic thought, but also carrying within it the origin of the Trinity, which itself finds its way all the way to Christianity. So saying Christ is God is very radical. It's very new. It's not very common. The idea of a man as a God, as a matter of fact, as the son of man, as God is extremely new. Although it is what most cultures want to uh, aspire to because every culture wants that Messiah, that human version of God, which is an old story again, but it's never succumbed. There are many, there were many who were to be like Christ before Christ. There were many to be to claim to be like be Christ after Christ. The idea of a Christ predates Christ and has never ended after Christ. Is put it that put it plainly. The idea of a Christ predates Christ by thousands of years, and the story of a Christ after Jesus Christ continues for thousands of years. As a matter of fact, the Jews are still looking for their Christ. So the ideals of these, these concepts of a man, a human being who represents God is not new, but the one to claim to, to separate from Christ and God and to literally say, this is Christ himself, God himself incarnate is new. And in fact, there, there was a rabbi uh, which died not long ago was, well, the followers or the so-called Jew believed that he was the Messiah. Yes. He was the, he was the, he was Christ, but he died not long ago, <clears throat> maybe two, maybe two, two, two to three or four years ago. Yeah. He passed away. So the, 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 the aim of Christ always keep going. Keep coming, not keep going, keep coming. Yeah, yeah and I remember because I used to live in Crown Heights in the. Yes, yes, yes. he was in Crown Heights. Yeah, he I, was in Crown Heights. See his picture everywhere around my block. And I remember who you're talking about. They call him Mosaic, the Mosaic. And I was like, the first thing I thought is, why are you like 80 years old? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was like, why is he the Christ? He's, he's just, he's, he's been here for a long time and he's just not figuring it out. But I was as a, I was me as a child trying to understand it, like, but yeah. So just to give you a picture of that concept. But um, why it's important that what's important in in here is John is saying that something has to reveal to you that Jesus is Christ, and it's not something that I can force you to believe. I can tell you these things. I can teach you all these things. I can show you all these things, but it has to be revealed in you as it was revealed in me. It was something that revealed it in me that Yeshua is God. And it was by my own understanding of his words, of his recorded words, of his knowledge, of his understanding of how he expresses himself, something told me. And I could only, it could only be revealed to me through the word of God, that Jesus is God. And no matter how many people, some people will believe it, some won't believe it. But what shows me that is the spirit of God. 
It's the Holy Spirit that tells me. And it's the Holy Spirit that tells you. It's not Ricardo. It's not Pastor Santa. It's not Jimmy. It's not a, a, a Pastor, what's, whatever the biggest name is right there. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, you have to make that decision for yourself. And it's God that makes that decision for you. In your, it's God. It's the Holy Spirit, excuse me, that makes that decision for you. So that's how you know that he is the spirit of God. Amen. So it says, and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist. Now, that sounds contentious. I want to focus on that for a brief moment. It sounds contentious when you say it because there are many people who will not accept that Jesus is Christ. And that doesn't, and I would, I would, I would imagine that they would not like to be considered an antichrist. <laughs> There's many people in the in the Christian religion that do not profess that Jesus is Christ. I would attest that they would not accept to be called an antichrist. I have I met I've cause I've come I've friends who are Adventists who don't necessarily accept that. I have friends who are of the Hebrew Israelite, and I have friends who are of the um, Jehovah Witness who do not acknowledge those that criteria that Christ is Himself God incarnate, or that He is He's not He is not God in in human form, right? So not to mention, of course, other religions that just like say the Muslims who believe in God but do not accept Jesus Christ as, as uh, who actually do believe Jesus Christ as the Messiah, just that he is also human and not divine. It's a it's a it's a lost message, but I, I try to it's it's deeper if you try to learn about Islam. But I like to I like when my Islamic brothers teach me what they know, and it's it's helpful to me. But um um. Yeah, or the Jews just don't accept it at all. So, uh, but, I want to go back to verse four. You, you say something um, very profound and very deep. You say that it is not nobody who tell you that Jesus Christ is the Messiah or is God. Is he talk to you? Is something is you? Is you have to listen. Now in verse four, he say, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than that which is in the world. What is in you? Holy Spirit. So who told you Holy that Spirit. God, <laughs> that God, it is not pastor, it is not nobody. Nobody tell you. It's the spirit that is in you. Now, if you don't have the spirit of Christ, well, it's up to you. But you will not hear it. Well, is 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 actually a little bit more complex than that. In essence, you know why? Mm -hmm. Because you definitely may receive the word if you were given the opportunity. See, yeah. Uh, well, but, but. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So here's where, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Here's where we start off. Back to the first verse. It says, "Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try." spirit whether they, is, uh, they are of God. So this is where I want to focus the word. See, the word I just said there is that you may absolutely receive the word and know the truth if you are led by the right spirit. If your spirit has been directed by the correct spirit. But I, you, and all of us <laughs> we have been led to lead so I think God, and I, I can give claim to Christ. I can give a little claim to Pastor Sentil, who was my leader, who was my teacher. Of course, I'm giving I'm not giving him the credit. I'm giving the credit to God for giving him the ability to teach me the word that he God has taught him. So he is he he is directing me towards the truth 
but he is not the truth. Amen? No, no, no. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And I would say that if I was a Muslim, I would be a devout Muslim. So who is teaching me is the key point there. Now the Holy Spirit is in me. I believe it. I believe no matter where I would go, I would I have the Holy Spirit in me. What will reveal to me the Holy Spirit is if I never received the word of Christ. If I never knew the story of Christ, or if I've been taught to reject the word of Christ by someone who themselves is not directed by the, the righteous spirit. Now, is it possible that an imam is a liar? Or is he been told a lie and he teaches a lie? That's the key word. When I said imam, imam is a, is, a, is a Muslim preacher, is a Muslim leader, right? So is it possible that say someone who is of a, a particular uh, denomination who refuses to accept the word of God and teaches his disciples, his followers the word of God from his perspective? Now, my friend who is a-, a wait, wait, wait a second. Yeah, go ahead. How could- how could how could what isn't that person that teach against Christ against Yeshua? Who isn't that person? Amen. We teach who is Yeshua. That's a beautiful question. It's a beautiful question because it actually answers its own question. An answer to its own question. Because the only thing that should be in that person is to teach Christ. That should be the ultimate point, is Yeshua, the word of God. It should be no, I've often said this, you can argue about almost anything in the scripture. You can't argue Christ. You cannot argue Christ. Because Christ is as clear as day, is as clear as black and white. If you un if you read the word of God, if you read the words of Christ, you understand everything that you need to know about Christ. There's no need to get a footnote. Uh, there's no need to have other scriptures written for um, that part. I say that because that's the cost, that what happens in many other scriptures. As a matter of fact, we learned that in Judaism. The Holy Bible is just one book. Uh, the five books, I mean, of Moses is one book. And because of those five books, their religion has 20, 30 books. Their Bible is not one Bible. It's 20, 30 Bibles. They call them the Talmuds to explain everything because there's so much to, uh, to either erase or, or try to fit. Because if you read the Old Testament as is, you have so many questions. And because you don't have Christ to fill in these holes, there's so many holes. And that's the almost the purest proof of a Christ, as a matter of fact, in my opinion. When I learned this about the Talmuds, and I learned this about other books, when I read certain things about Islam and I realized that they, they, their whole religion is based on trying to make everything make sense. Christ makes perfect sense. You don't need footnotes. When he says, love thy enemy, love your brother as yourself. Love simple. Him. That's love simple. Love thy God with all thy heart and thy might. That's simple. Forgive your brother. Love your enemy. These are not hard to understand. No. These are not hard things to figure out. You figured it out if you understand what love is. And that you, don't, you fill in the blanks by yourself. Because if you know what love is, you know how to fill in the blanks. You know how to uh, how to treat your, your 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 brother, so that should be easy for you to treat your neighbor as your brother. You know how to love someone who doesn't love you, so it should be easy to understand. When God tells you to love your enemy. What He's actually telling you to do, He's not telling you to embrace um, the contention and 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 to let your enemy destroy you, but to desire better for your enemy than your enemy desire for you. That you don't respond with the with hate with hate that you ret retaliate hate with love and you amen. 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 amen 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 is for a solution amen at the end of the day you seek for peace i understood that at age 12. i didn't need no one to tell me this and since age 12 all i've been doing is trying to keep that mentality 
that's the beauty. That's the uh, that's the hard part of growing up. <laughs> that you know the word easy as a child. What happens is as you grow up, is you find it hard to live up to that word. That's the struggle. That's the struggle of knowing the word. It's not understanding the word. It's living the word. Yeah. When the word is easy. I'm sorry. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's, it's true. It's, it's, it's not to understand because what is happening, we are facing reality. We are not facing a cliche. This is not a cliche. This is something, this is a day to day life. And I am, I am the one to live that life. And I am living that life. And it is a struggle. It's not easy. It's not something just a piece of cake. Because every single day in my life, I have to love people I don't want to love. People I don't want to have nothing to do with. Yet. Christ require from me to live them. This is not a joke. This is not just a piece of cake. You sweat. And most of the time, you get hurt. What I mean by hurt, you get hurt. The enemy go after you to destroy you. And you could see it. Yet, you have to love. Why? Why I have to love? Because the verse says, so he that loves not, knows not God. There you go. Okay. So to me, so to me, the key point here the key point here is that in John 3, 16, he gives you the character of the heavenly father. He describes you what the heavenly father is. For God so loved the world that he gave. Now, when we're talking about the world, the world composed with all kinds of individual. All kind is not composed with good things only. The world composed with bad and with good, but yet the heavenly father loved every one of them. So what, we, what do the father require from me? As individual, Monica sent you, Ricardo, what God requires from us or from me or from every one of us, that we should be like him. That's where the, 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 the struggle is. So that's the, there's a part to that when you said to be like him, which is the ultimate, which is the point. Just the point. The point of it all is Christ came to teach us how to be like him. Amen. And the important part of that is that it is more than just um, to be like him on earth. The truth is to be like him for eternity. To be heir and co-heir, which I love. With John, John has a very the way John speaks of Christ, his relationship with man is to me like the, 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 he is the most descriptive, the best description. Is it distinguished? Is it distinguished uh, um, a speaker? Is it distinguished writer? Right. And I would say, really, in most cases, John directed by the Holy Spirit of God. Absolutely. I think may, maybe maybe because he had the he has an inter, being the oldest to have an interaction with Yeshua from the, from face to face he has a deeper insight.
But the key to how he speaks of Christ, he speaks of Christ as a brother. He can understand what it means to call Christ brother. But you have to imagine the concept of God, knowing God is in front of you and God calling you brother. That's a very, that's a very profound. Deep. All of us from deep. It's deep. It's bigger than we think. Yes. Because I, 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 don't, I don't think, I think when God revealed to me something where I, I realized that my father is not my father, but my brother, it changed my, the way I think of things. Right? It helped me to see things in the light. And I have a different respect for my father. It doesn't mean that I no longer respect my father and my no, father. That's not that. But it helped me to understand my father in a way that I didn't see him as a child. And it allowed me to understand him in a way that if as I saw him as a child, as an adult, there are things that I would not see of him that I could not accept. But I can, I can see in my brother that I can accept because I can see it in myself because of the equality of each other. As I became a father from, um, of my own, I now see my father in a way that, although I always see him as my father, but I see him as a father, as I see myself as a father, as I see my brothers as fathers, and I see something different. There is a love here. There is an understanding here that is kind of a, a, a camaraderie or some kind of like, okay, I see what he went through and I'm seeing it in my own. And I can now have a more deeper understanding of certain decisions he made as a father that I may not have understood as a child. So I compare that to say that God, to have that relationship with God to, as not your, just your creator, but to thrive with you to be there, to walk with you, as Emmanuel is the word is, to walk with you, to walk in the struggle with you, and to take on the struggle side by side with you. It's a different experience. It's a humbling experience because yeah. you're seeing the creator of the universe humbling himself to you. That's a very powerful way to see it. It is a powerful way. It it, is. It's not in any way diminishing him at all. It actually- None, none, none whatsoever. None whatsoever. The, mm -hmm. the, 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 the only, well, this is, this, is, this is the humility that God has, the, the Father has, yes. that he, he don't have a complexity in his character, in the sense of bringing his children to himself, in the sense of showing his children who he is. And not only this, he also anticipated our failure. He anticipated our failure. He do not, he do not, he's not there to criticize us just for the sake of criticize. In our, in our society, we have two different type of criticism. One is constructive criticism. One is destructive criticism. God never give us a, 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 a destructive criticism. I leave it there for my brother to talk because I don't want appreciate that destructive criticism now it's funny you've said the word destructive criticism because i said i mentioned i said um that part where i said he that doesn't accept that jesus christ is god is the spirit of the antichrist that might come across as destructive criticism and um <laughs> but i say that to say what i what i was mentioning in it in, this, in essence, this is not what Christ is saying, but this is what John is saying. But the point being is that there is a truth to it, but here is the part that is missing. All of us carry the spirit of the Antichrist. That's right. That's right. That's the second part to the Holy Spirit. 
you are with you have the Holy Spirit in you, but you are also the Holy the Spirit of the Antichrist. What is that? Why is that? Why does that mean? Who is the Antichrist? The Antichrist is Cain. In definition, Cain is a re representative of the, the child of Lucifer and man, the son of man and Lucifer. That's who the Antichrist is. It is the, the direct spawn of the, the fallen one with Adam, the seed of Adam. So who is that? Who is that really? It's a simple thing if you actually want to do mathematics, right? That's all of us. Each and every one of us carries that seed. Yes. So, yes, it sounds contentious, but the fact is we are born desiring to resist Christ. We are born designed to resist the truth of God. The easiest thing to do is resist the truth because what is good for us is the opposite of good. Yes. What is good for man is the opposite of God. Well, they, they, now you go back to the mercy, to the previous mercy, vanity. Amen. <laughs> we confuse. Where does vanity come from? The father of vanity. <laughs> That's right. Of, 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 of the father of, of, of selfishness, the father of, of self-righteousness. That is where vanity comes from. To be to to, to have vanity is to re reject God and, and put yourself first. That's all it is, and that's all Lucifer did. All all that he is is to just put himself above God. That's all of us. We tend to do it more times than we want to admit, but all of us have it. I know I have it. I'm not. I if I can only speak for myself, then I will do so. And I have, I have, I have it. If that's fine, if, if I'm the only one who claims it. I have it. I, 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 and, 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 and I know, in fact, to me, this is my struggle. It is all of our struggle. This is my struggle right now to, to oppose, to, to go against my own will, if I may use the word, and to follow God's will. And God will always, always to, to understand God's will the end of the situation is a victory. But the other will that I have, the end of it is a disaster. It may look good. It may look very sensible. It may look very logical. But look at the result. Look at the result. The result either bring disasters of, there is a verse, sorry, I, I'm burned. There is a verse who said, what will it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What, what that mean? Anybody could, I don't want to take time in, in the message, but what that mean to lose, to gain the whole world and lose your own soul? What, what really anybody could come up with something? Anybody could come up with something to 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 gain the world. What that mean to gain the whole world? Well. Even for anybody else to answer. If not, That's I'm, what I'm thinking. Yeah, because somebody might have something beautiful or very, very, very deep, which we may not understand. To get the whole world. Because actually, in John chapter four, uh, for in piece of John chapter four, this is what is all about right there. This is what it's all about. The Antichrist and those that are in God, the Antichrist is going to lead us to the world, to have the world. Yeah. That's, the, that's the aim of Antichrist, to have everything that you desire in this world. 
So, so to answer that question, we have to remind, uh, remember when Christ was being tempted, that Lucifer himself was telling him, I will give you the whole world. <laughs> I will give you all of this is yours under the sun. And I can take that back to Solomon who says, all is vanity. Right. Everything under the sun is vanity. It's, it's not supposed to be just opposed, but I put them together. Here you have Solomon who is the king who has all knowledge of the world and he has everything. And he says, everything is vanity, just a vexation of the spirit. The word vanity, just remember that part. Now you have Lucifer, who has Jesus on the top of a mountain, and he's telling them, look, all of this is yours. I'll give you everything, just serve me. <laughs> and he said, and so that, that pretty much is the answer to it all. What profits a man that he gains the whole world? Because the whole world is vanity. It's nothing. So what is the profit? If you have nothing, what is the profit of nothing? What's the sums of zero? The zero. You know what I mean? That's what you get. So you have actually nothing. Why? Why Christ came? Why Christ came in this world? What is the the real reason Christ came in this world? What is the real reason that Christ came in this world? Anybody could come up with something. What is the real reason? What is the real reason that um, John is um, telling us about the Antichrist? What, what is the real reason John is telling us about the Antichrist? and those that are in Christ. What is the real reason behind those, those, those? In other words, John is pushing us uh, to tell us something that greater than we do, or greater than we know. What is the reason for that? If you know what is the reason Christ came, then you will know why John keep on bothering us about that antichrist business. Well, um, I think he came to uh, show us uh, to be the example, to show us what it looked like um, to be a child of God or what it looked like to walk according to the will of God. And that way, when we know what that looked like, we can know the opposite as well, which is the Antichrist. Read Psalm 93. Read Psalm 93. And then read Psalm, part of Psalm 94. Read Psalm 93, you will see the real reason that Christ came. Psalm 93, but the Psalm 93 is, <laughs> is the mighty. But Psalm 94, then that the real reason. Some, both of them linked together, both some linked together. Psalm 93. Anyone could read it loud because they could hear it. The Lord reigns, he is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength. Whereas he has girded himself, the world also is established that, is, that it cannot be moved. That throne is established of old, thou art from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of the many waters, yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. Thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becomes 
thine house, O Lord, forever. Now read verse, uh, uh, read 94. You will see what happened, what's going to happen. O Lord, to whom vengeance belongs, O God, to whom vengeance belongs, show thyself. Lift up thyself, thou judge of the earth, render a reward to the proud. Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? How long shall they utter and speak hard things? And all the workers of iniquity boast themselves. They break in pieces thy people, O Lord, and afflict thine heritage. They slay the widow and the stranger and murder the fatherless. Yet they say, the Lord shall not see, neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. Understand ye brutish among the people, and ye fools, when will, when will ye be wise? He that planted the, earth, the ear, shall he not hear? He that formed the eye, shall he not see? He that chastises the heathen, shall not he correct? He that teaches man knowledge, shall not he know? The Lord knows the thoughts of man, that they are vanity. Blessed is the man whom thou chast chastens, O Lord, and teaches him out of the law of thy law, that thou may give him rest from the days of adversity, until the pit of until the pit be digged for the wicked. Now you you, you see what's going on here. This is a time, time given. There is a time given until that pit dig for the wicked. Now, I am not saying anybody is wicked, but at the same token, Christ came because he knew what going to happen at the end of the ball game. So the, I think the, Back to the, what I was saying that Christ taught is, you know, teach us to be like him. The truth is, until Christ came, it's clear that it's not 100% clear. I just said, I, I think I meant to, I didn't mean to say it that way, but it makes sense. It's clear that it's not 100% clear. Is that Christ himself has, God has always been here. But God has always allowed others to speak for him. Sure. And what happens is oftentimes the word is lost. Yes, sir. Mostly because of the person who is speaking of it. That's right. And oftentimes the person God speaks sends themselves may have their own agenda that speaks for him. That's correct. And oftentimes the, the story itself gets lost in translation. That's right. But when I started saying about how the, to mind the spirit, who's teaching the word, the difference between all those God has sent and God himself is that there is no agenda that Christ has other than to save our lives. That's right. His truth is itself the truth. His truth is truth. His truth is not truth according to Ricardo. It's not truth according to Pastor. It's not truth according to Paul. It's not truth according to Isaiah. It's not truth according to Moses. God's truth. Christ is truth. It's truth according to God. And that's a difference. And what I said before about how you can argue many things. I can argue 90% of what Moses says. I can argue many things. You can have, there are many things in Deuteronomy you could have Christ himself is going to, is going to knock out. And then you can create all these religions based on the difference of opinions. But there's no difference of opinions when Christ tells us the word love one another when he tells you that to believe in him is to be is is makes you a child of god and salvation only comes through christ right and that what he gives no one can take away That's these right. are the truths 
These are the unalienable truths that Christ gives us. And only Christ can give it to us. And no one else can take it from us. So when we understand that Jesus Christ is our Savior, we understand that he is our God. That simple thought, it may sound simple. It is a powerful statement. It is a powerful proclamation. It is you saying beyond anything that you understand, that you acknowledge the universe has put itself in harm's way to save your life. It tells you, you are claiming your own importance to the universe. That simple statement is you claiming your importance to the universe. Mind you, you are extremely small. If it is, in, it, it is impossible to understand how small you are. It is impossible for me to demonstrate how little significant we are to the universe. To just give a, you know, I, I often try to explain that there are more stars in the, in the sky than there are grains of sand in the, in the beach. That's itself. If you understand how big a star is, you, that, that helps you to understand how small you, we must be, right? That there are, that you can count how vast the universe is. So when I say God, I speak of the universe because he created the universe and he yes, is sir. the universe. Yes, sir. And he, the universe, has brought himself down to the shit, to, to in the embodiment of a man to die just so you can live forever, just so you don't die because you are deserving of death. But he loves you this much. That's how, that's what you're claiming when you say that Jesus is God. Because you're claiming that God has gone to these lengths to save my life, that's right. to save your life. That's right. And you're not worthy of any of it. I'm not worthy of any of it. That's right. But to not be able to say it is to say no, to say I'm not. And that's also to say that all of Christ's um, work is in vain. That's the insult. To not be able to proclaim Christ as God, you're actually insulting the work of God because his job is to make sure that you know who he is. Because if you know who he is, then you know who you are. What is, what is the, the mean confusion that the spirit of Antichrist put between God and Christ? What is the confusion? What is the argument, if I may use the word, between Christ God, Christ not God? What is the argument? What is the, what is the key conversation about the Antichrist and those that are in Christ? I think in John chapter, the same chapter you're talking about is, is there. You will find that quest, that answer right there in that same part, in that same passage. I think it's verse, six, in verse six or verse five. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God, he that knows God hears us, he that is not of God hears not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Now, the spirit of error, where do the spirit of our leaders? What the spirit of error say? I think to answer your question of where does that come from, that spirit of re rejecting the idea of between God and Christ, goes back to that verse of the world. The way the world has been designed is from the way of Lucifer, <laughs> that he is in charge. He gives others power, right? But Lucifer does not share that power. 
he wants it for himself. And all of the unit, all of the world. Don't go, don't, don't go there. I stand the same point. The same point you just you share you 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 show um 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 Lucifer um indulge us in that conversation of that power, but then you restrict it. You say he don't share his power. So what is going on? He, he indulge us to deny Christ the power. But then you come back and say to us that, but you should, uh, Lucifer don't share his power. So what Lucifer is doing with us? Understand that. You just finished making that statement. You sure uh, Lucifer do not share his power? What do you mean by he doesn't share his power? So to con contrast that with Christ, who calls himself heir and co-heir. As but, but don't, don't go yet. Don't go. Don't go yet. It's keep that. Keep that in your mind. Keep that. To make the contrast, you have to find out your statement first. Yeah. He doesn't share the power. It's Lucifer doesn't share the power. Christ, don't. That's the contrast. This yeah. is the contrast now. The contrast is Christ share his power with whom? Us. Okay. Now, the other side, the, the Christ, uh, uh, Lucifer do not share his power. So if he doesn't share his, uh, his power, what happened to us? We're lost. We have no power. Oh, that's, a that's a beautiful. That's beautiful. That's it is, this is very beautiful here. That's a beautiful here. How does Christ share His power with us? He tells us, with the face of a mustard seed, even you can move mountains. Yes. He didn't say. He didn't say. I will move that mountain for you. He says, with the face of a mustard seed, even you can move the mountain. And even, even go, he go further. He said, before he said, I am the light of the world. But when he's gone, he said, you are the light of the world. Yeah. You are the light. Another way, he passed the baton to us. Yeah. That means this is sharing. But then not only sharing in that sense. Oh, before we go there, please let us go back to devil, to, to Lucifer about us. Somebody please come up with some kind of answer for us now, please. Because this is very deep. This is very deep. If Lucifer don't share his power, what happened to us? What, what do we believe? And when I say, I, remember I say we, that means I am in it. What do we believe in Lucifer? Or what do we believe? What do what are we looking for? What, what is our desire? What is our desire? What are we looking for in life? What are we looking for in life? Either life to come or life now. What are we looking for? This conversation. You see, we could talk. This is intimate question. What I'm, what I'm looking for in life. What, what I want. What do I want? I think everybody has something different. Yes, go ahead. That That's why we need different, different district. Everybody has their own. Their own goal. Yeah, their own goal. And God meets them wherever they are. Um, when it comes to what we want, it doesn't really match up to what God wants for us. Oh, forget time. it. <laughs> we, we know we. What we want is not necessarily clear um, because what we want is usually based off of worldly needs. Of course. Um, of course. Of course. They, and it takes away. However, I feel that 
the question that you asked earlier when it comes to what Christ did. And I think that's, when we understand that, we can understand what we would want. But when Christ died for us, that was his ultimate sacrifice to show why we need, why he's given us something that we didn't even deserve. Meaning he's given us the, the throne that wasn't going to be given to us either way, whether by the enemy or by God, because we were already damned from the very beginning. It's beautiful. So, he would not have been what do you mean? What do you mean either by God by either by God or by the devil or by Lucifer? Either by God. Remember, it wasn't given to us either by God or by Lucifer. Take up this question. These questions are very deep. They are not shallow. These statements are not shallow. Either by Lucifer or by God, why by why not by Lucifer? Why he were not given to us by Lucifer? Go back to Ricardo again. Go back to Ricardo, and and that going to match it up. He, 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 the, the, the kingdom, the everlasting kingdom, was not given to us by Lucifer, neither by God. Ricardo said. Or uh, that brother said, devil don't share. If he don't share, that means the kingdom, even if he had it, he would not give it to us. Because it belonged to him. Now, we understand that. We understand Lucifer is a selfish God which is only looking after him and him. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my, my dear brother, I have to inject that because he come to me, I have to inject it. Because when you talk about sharing, that's that. <laughs> now, who in this world now, we could take an example of what you just said about the sharing, about not giving you the kingdom. Who could we take a, a, as example? We, we, we could share it because it happened right now in America, right in our eyes. Trump. Sorry to involve those things, but those things are real. Trump, have all these guys put their life in line for him, deputed for him. When Chavel come to Chavel, what he did, he fired them. He put them out. Duvalier made that a statement. Duvalier said, a person who is um, who is reciprocating gratitude, in other words, if you do something for me, um, if you do something for me, good thing, you do something for me. Me now, if I am going to repay you the same good thing, it means I am a very weak person. You understand, uh, do you understand the situation? In other words, they call it the, um, if you do something good for me, what should be my, 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 um, my response or my gratitude towards you, if I could help? Is to is to do the same thing you do to me, no? Is to is to help you help me. But when your time come in, what should be my what should be my response to all your time? 
when your hard time, my hard time, you help me. Now it is your hard time. What should be my 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 um, response to you? The value say if you the same, that means you are weak. Dictator. <laughs> so I guess where you think he gets it from? That is the ultimate. The father of dictatorship starts with Lucifer. This is what you just said before. He doesn't share. Well, to, to get deep into it, the Antichrist, this world is a dictatorship. But that's what I'm, this is not a free world. You don't own the world as Christ has often tell us, the prince of this world, such and such, right? So we have to always remember that although things are honky, things look nice and gleam and everything, this world, the order of how it works, it stands, it stands on the death of many. That's right. And the the and it is it is not a it is not a utopia. No. Okay. <laughs> there is only one person in charge. And I'm charge. And it's not God. Now, no. That, not to diminish God. No, no, no. no that, that, that God has accepted the rule that we have given. Now, I wanted to say something in the light of what Body was saying about how um, we not we're not giving them. Um, the uh, how do you say that we weren't granted the um ever uh, uh, we, we were not granted we are not granted the the, the world or, or goal by Lucifer neither but, by God. Right, I would say that that though it's true, the fact is that we have granted Lucifer the kingdom because God has already created us to be like him. That was the, originally the plan. Yeah, but that, that's not that's what the, this is not the, the line where the Gladia it was going. No, yeah, I see what you're, I'm saying that. Because Gladia, Gladia was saying that, um, if I understand what she was saying is that we don't know really what we want, but everybody have different goals. But Lucifer, really, who have the goal, the goal that we're looking for, Lucifer would not give it to us, neither God would not give it to us. The ultimate goal. Which is? Which is to live forever well, and enjoy, enjoy life forever. Well, that's what, I mean, truth is, I think whether we are, we, it may have different points of views, but I think the reality is from Lucifer on down, it means every creature God created on down, right? So that means to me and you. I think everyone has everyone has one thing in common, right? Is that we all want to live forever. I don't think there's anybody that does any creature that doesn't want eternal life. Yes. I think at the end of the day, we have different versions of happiness and different ideas of what uh, eternity looks like. But I don't think anyone will say, no, nah, I don't want to live forever happy. I don't want to have it all. So have it all can be different, but it's all the same in totality, is that everyone wants it all. And I believe the whole key to Christ is saying that you can have it all. So he says, um, um, sorry. All right. Um, to to worship God and all things will be given unto you, right? He's given you that promise. He's saying that all things are given unto you after the kingdom. The kingdom is in heaven, not here. So he's not he's not denying you the reality of what you your desire, which is everything. Everyone wants to be the, to have the kingdom. Everyone wants to be king. I think that's the that's that's an understandable statement. Or queen, sorry. Everybody wants that as a child or to uh, to adulthood. Lucifer himself. I think Lucifer struggles with the fact that he can never be king in the way he wants to be king, which is to be God. And that's he is the first to, to revolt against that. But he is not the only. So he is the many. Yeah, but the yeah. argument, the argument I think Gladia is is I think Gladia is saying. My question was, what do we want? Yeah. That was the question, right? 
what, what do we want? What, what do we want in this life, in the life? What do every single person want in this life? And the graduate come up with, everybody have different goals, which is true. Everybody have different want, which is true. But in the finality, Graja come up with that argument. What we may want or not want, devil not gonna give it to us. Why? Because he don't share. No, does he but have then Graja retract the question, make it more difficult now. Even God not going to give it to us. That's what makes the thing complicated here. This is what make it complicated. Why God not going to give it to us? Now remember, we are not talking about Christ. We put Christ aside. Christ is not in the picture. We're talking about the Almighty. He's not going to give it to us. Why? No. Devil not going to give it to us. The Almighty not going to give it to us. Why? Remember, Christ is not in the picture yet. Remember that. Christ is not on the, in other words, put, put Christ aside. You gotta be careful because you're starting to sound like a Trinitarian. Yeah, right. I, 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 I understand, but I am coming with Christ. Yeah. I am coming with Christ. You're coming in the sense of what he represented. When he, he represented, you see, you see, in John 1, a first epistle John of John chapter four have two things there. He has two things there. Remember he said in verse four, ye are of God, ye are of God. And look at what he said, little children. He addressed us as children. Who make us children? God. God has made us children to who? To whom? Christ. To Christ. But what about those that do not have the spirit of Christ? What about them? This is where Gladia come in. This is where the argument come in. The argument come in here. Those that God not going to give eternal life, which you already give to home, because according to you again, they refuse to take it. Therefore, they put their own condemnation upon themselves. So we we can backtrack to that idea of the thought of when I, we spoke of the spirit of the Antichrist. That's right. Four of us. And it is that nature to reject, as you said, to reject um, eternal life. And going back to your question of what is what causes us to argue against. God being Christ being God. Now saying that the reality is the Lucifer has already set the stage. Set the stage, but he set the stage, he set the stage in the way of deceiving us. Yes. So the key is as long as we understand the rule of law according to Lucifer, which is that there is one, there is one God, one king, one king and there's the subjects, and all of us are subject to him. That's right. We believe that, we accept that, and we have come, we've made that in its own, its own category, <clears throat> sorry, its own category. Because what we want to be, the spirit of Antichrist is a slave. 
That's right. It is. It is. It is. Completely simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, oh, these words, these words are not light words, you know, my brother. Please, these words are not light. When we're talking about a slave, what do we mean by slave? To be burdened, to be locked up, caged. So what to, Christ came to, to, to deprive you, to deprive you every sense of your humanity, Amen. of your integrity, of who you are. To deprive you every sense of freedom, of liberty. So the key word there is fear. Of course, my brother. Of course, of course, of course. Of course, of course, of course. What, is it, what is it that causes us to say, to not be able to accept Christ as God is fear. And that comes from Lucifer. Of course, my brother. It comes because when we are afraid to acknowledge who God has made us to be, we are rejecting what God has made us to be. Not only rejecting we're not ourselves to be what Lucifer wants us to be as men, which is slaves. Not only, not only rejecting of what God does to want us to be, but what God intent for us yes. from the beginning for us to be. Yes. From the beginning, he intent to be his children. Be like him. Be citizen, be like him. No. To manifest a thing like him. To be holy as he is holy. To be clean and power as he is. This is his intent. So, but, go ahead. But again, the spirit of Antichrist is not to embrace freedom. No, no, no. The Antichrist is to embrace sickness, is to embrace death, is to embrace control, is to embrace violence, and it's to embrace all the things that you have to pay for. So in other words, the only way to have happiness is to, is to pay for something. Yes. You can't get it with just love, but you have to pay for something. Yes. So who am I to tell you that I am like Christ? Because how dare I? Right, because I haven't paid for it. I didn't pay nothing. I did nothing to earn it, which is true. Of course, that's true. Which is Agreed. which is the devil's best argument against us. Agreed. Right? It is the ultimate truth. Is that his great argument is that we are so unworthy of this. So many of us actually accept that to be the truth, and it's we easy. rather rather than live according to Christ, we live according to man. And man's design is to tell you that you are not, that only certain people get to be this. Only certain people, whether they look a certain way, maybe it's a certain skin color, get to be this. See where I'm going with this? Yes, so, ma'am. Yes, 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 yes. Class of people. Yes, 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 yes. That's right. That's why you classify it. And even in the Bible itself, we have what you have. The same thing. Even in, in, in um, the Judaism started with, it's only a chosen people get to be this. Yes. This mentality starts with, goes from before Christ. But it's the mentality of man is to separate and classify men. It's to say that there is no equality toward, we don't have equality. It's not, it's not shaped this way. We I have, have, a, I have a question. I have a question. Oh, why am I? Let me let somebody, if somebody come with a question, no, my dear. I have to want always to bring a question. Why I have to bring a question? Uh, uh, repeat what you just said again. Uh, you just said the, the, the mentality of devil is we have to pay, but God is not, you don't have to pay. I just bring you into your thought so you could come up with your thought again because I, there's, I don't want there's to. There's a price for having yeah. Yes, there's a price for eternal life, and there is something that you have to gain and have to give up and sacrifice. Now, this is all true. It is all true that none of this is earned. We haven't earned any of it. And Lucifer's argument is that you don't deserve it because you haven't earned anything. And how dare you? Because you are nothing. You are not better than me. And I am definitely going to die. <laughs> And you, if, if I'm going to die, so will you. 
You know what I mean? So this is I'm 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 breaking it down. But the point being is that Lucifer's ideal, Lucifer's main trail to is to teach us to sacri to to classify ourselves and to diminish ourselves and to acknowledge how small we really are, to separate ourselves from God. Because as long as we're separate from God, we're not equal. And as long as we're not like him, we will never be free. And he can use that against us. And he can use us against God. Uh, the question, God, but uh, if we've been tricked by Lucifer argument, and because we lost to this world, what do I mean we lost to this world? What do I mean we lost or end this world or to this world? Why we lost in this world? What this world is doing to us? What, what this world is doing to us? I, I don't say Lucifer per se. But what this world is doing to us? You already described some of the things that this world already, we say Lucifer, but um, actually I would not mention name of Lucifer there because I don't see Lucifer per se. You understand, I see myself and I see people. I see government and I see chief and I see individual. And all that you say, this is what we do. I see institution that doing the same thing that you just said, classify class, put people in classes. Even though is Lucifer behind the scene that work, but if people I am seeing doing it. So what is going on? What, what the people are really looking in this world? Because I, I don't see Lucifer per se, even though I do know with a shadow of doubt that he is the prince of this world, everything there, but he is not in person to see his people that I saw that doing this thing. In other words, we are, we are doing his bidding. We're living, we're doing our part to be human, which is to do as he does, to do like our father, right? So each and every one of us strives for his, ourselves instead of each other. Nobody, the world isn't a world where everyone is together. It's a world where the survival of the fittest. That's right. The strong survive. This comes from Lucifer. Yeah, of course but we do. Know. That, you know, only the strongest survive is not a godly thought. Although I was taught that in school. That's right. Taught that to be a moral thing. We <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, please, 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 you say it, it's supposed to be a moral thing. Yeah. So, so what do you mean by be, be a moral thing? That this is righteous. <laughs> we prefer so, you put it better. Like, prefer you use those words than to use moral because there is no moral per se. I mean, the country, I was raised to believe that it was God's right that America should own from the New York to California that this was God's gift, uh, I call it manifest destiny. What it really is, is an explanation for white supremacy to destroy um, uh, Native Americans from one side of, the, of the, wor the world to the other, just to say that God gave us this land or gave them this land. It's the same thing with Israel too. Exactly, it's all the same. So where does that come from? And if you say God gives you this, it's that's that mentality that Lucifer is allowing you to hide behind him 
to say that this is righteous or to say that this is God. Yeah, but the, the deception, where, where is that deception? Where is deception? Where you see deception there? Where, where do you see deception? Well, According to the statement you just made. Well, you just, you made, you pointed it out. You point out that this was, this, this was from Israel. Israel's whole point is that God said that Canaan is theirs. So the deception is that God become devil by what I'm saying. In other words, I use the name of God. To do devilish work. Now, I actually showed this to my children, and the first thing they saw is, isn't this genocide? Yeah, of course. The Bible. Of course, it, it is, the, is, the, is the devil work, but it is not devil who take the blame. Of course not. It's God. But what Christ said about that? Well, thank you for allowing me to get back to the first part of that. <laughs> is right there. I'm, I'm, it's amazing. I'm actually happy you allowed me to go use the scripture itself to point out something. And it says, <laughs> believe not every spirit, but try the spirit whether they are of God. Now, that's a very important statement. And I'm glad, you, and I'm glad we went back to... Uh, Original topic. Right. No, I'm actually glad you brought up um, um, Israel and Canaan, and you brought up the story of Canaan, which in my own spirit tells me that this is genocide. And if I was to read it, no, anyhow I read it, anyhow I try to explain it to my children, it's genocide. And there's a spirit that doesn't fit the spirit of God in me. But as you said, how do you sell that? How do you sell that to people who are killing others in the name of God? Yeah, but look at what Christ said. Go back to your to, to that John, because look at what Christ said that you're going to see the opposite. Mm -hmm. The what Christ said, because right now we're leaving that argument. We're coming to Christ now, and let Christ express express it what he said, what John said. Christ require from us. And this was manifest, verse 9. In this was manifest the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten. Before you go to 9, read verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is God of God. Love is of God. Amen. Love is of God. Now continue. And verse and everyone that loves is born of God. Okay, everyone that love is born of God. Amen. Now, if you born of God, what God is to you, for you, or to you? Father. Do you see the contrast? of the argument that we were talking before. What Christ coming with, he coming with love. And he don't come up with love with class, with degree. He said we should love one another. He didn't say you should love the Haitian people only. He don't say you have to love American people only. He don't say you have to love the Af African people only. He don't say you have to love the European people only. He said we should love one another. Hey, on. Now keep going in verse 8 to 9. <clears throat> he that loves not, knows not God, for God is love. And this was manifest, the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten son unto the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us That's right. and sent his son to be the propitiation of our sins. 
So you see now what that particular verse is giving to you, it gives you the character of God. It gives you a description of God right there, you know. The character of God, the attribute of God, the, the, what really God wants from us, what we should be, how we should be, and, and be not for our sake, be to one another, to love one another. What a, what a, what a, what a heavy contrast. When we, call, when we put those two things together, what are the contrasts we see there? I want you to read for me. I'm sorry to say that, but I, I, I shouldn't not be sorry. Um, and verse Read uh, John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Go to verse 9, 10. One of you read it. Open. John chapter 15, verse 9, verse 10. Verse 11. Verse 12, this is God, the Christ is emphasis this thing, to whom? What Christ is given, to whom he's talking this thing? Or to whom he's addressing himself there? And before he addressing himself, he addressing in verse nine, Listen, read verse 9. Anybody could read it for us, please. John chapter uh, 15, verse 9. As the Father hath loved me, so, I, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that ye love one another as I loved you. Continue. No, it is still there. Now you see the contrast of classifying people. You see what Christ one of the reasons Christ came in this world, or God himself came in this world, is to show us his personality, if I may use the word personality. You understand me? I hope you do. To show us his character. To show us who he is. Why God had to do that? Why God have to do this kind of demonstration? So that we can distinguish between him and the world. This is beautiful. But the question is still remain. Remember the word distinguish, this is beautiful word, but the question is still remain. Why God have to do that again? That's what John said believe not in every spirit, but the spirit, whether they are of God. Yes, it's true, but why? Why God had to do that? Why the father had to do that? To come and demonstrate to us what he is. We've been lied to. Say that again. We've been lied to. <laughs> Please, my brother, could you could you spread it out? I mean, could you elaborate in it? Because Christ acknowledges that we have been told 
and untruth about who he is. <laughs> Lucifer. Talk, my brother. Talk. Talk. Lucifer has set a created a narrative, a false narrative. He has taken on the children of God. He has taken on the synagogues. He has taken on the scriptures himself. And he has told a lie. And it's been made a truth that Christ had to fix the lie himself. And we know not to be able to, now we know we know we either have to make the mistake of listening to the false statements of a man to say that it is God. You don't know how many times, how many times we face situation and then we open our mouth, we say, why God did it to me? Why God do that to me? <laughs> how many times, how many times we face a situation which is hard? We get into trouble, which is hard. And we say, why God did that to me? Why? Why God did that to me? We don't say, why, why Lucifer, devil, she did that to me. But God, the creator, we blame him for every single thing we do. Amen. I'll, I'll add to that. Because I that is a constant, a perfect argument that atheists will say, if there is a God, why let why all these things happen? And I always say to, to them, well, if there isn't a God, how come all these things happen? And you're not blaming the people who all these things happen, <laughs> right? So clearly you don't wanna blame mankind for the evil that happens in the world. But you say, why does God allow evil in the world? It's a very stupid argument, but it's made to sound very intelligent. When you- uh, this, is, this, is, this, is, uh, I, this is all, this is the word we've been talking all time this is what we do. That's the way we characterize God. The creator is a monster. We characterize God as a monster, as a God who don't have no feeling, who don't have no character to see how suffering we are, how hard we are passing to trial, how hard we are suffer. And he let us suffer like this. He let us suffer like this. We blame him for every single thing we do. Everything. How could? Because as you said, my brother, we've been bombarded with lie. We've been bombarded with lie and we accept it and we refuse to let it go. The, the, the worst thing in life, to refuse it, to let it go. You know how many times I'm praying for myself in a way of asking God to help me, not for me to fall under my own mistake, my own trap my own desire, which is so evil, yet I don't think is evil because to me what I see is good things I see. I see things that are beautiful that I'm going to enjoy. But when I get into it, the end becomes disastrous. The end becomes disastrous. Nevertheless, this is where you are now in John chapter one, uh, in, 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 in um, epistle of John chapter four, describe you the character of our father, the beauty of our father, the magnificence, majesty of him. But yet, in the opposite side, is a monster. So John starts out by telling us in the second part of the first verse, he says, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. That's right. He, now, 
now again we have to go back to the point is how do you know how many false prophets are out there <laughs> and <laughs> so the, the the battle of the antichrist starts before even the church the church of god was created church of, oh, of course of course so but there was no church okay. church not even exists at that time but you know but you acknowledge that there were many priests before christ of course my brother that's why when you say the church was not even exist because is the word church is just a new new word right so even before uh, i think um in genesis um it was said that before man called himself before that before man called the name of god the children of, of cain had already established many synagogues so it's to say that before there was God be men on the world, or to even start to praise God, there was already an established rule by Luc the children of Lucifer, the followers of Lucifer. Now we know pagans, paganism is far outdates uh, um, righteousness, right? Yes. Yes. The many synagogues existed, the many temples existed before the temples of God. We already know that the how, this is how Lucifer starts. So that goes back to the point I was making about the thought of Antichrist, the idea of how the world is supposed to be, or how righteousness is supposed to look like, or how being religious, quote unquote, is supposed to look like. So understanding the nature of how God is supposed to be was told before God ever told in the story. God's story was being told before God ever told the story. That's the reality of man. The story, the narrative was pre was before Christ, but the narrative was not for Christ, was for the Antichrist, because what the enemy thought to do was bypass God, preeminent, preemptive strike, to take man from him before he could even walk, before he could even think. Yes, yes, so, yes, yes, oh. yes, 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 yes. So yes, in yes, brain, yes, 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 in us is this desire to want what is not God but want to be a slave to a system, to be a slave to a, 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 an idolatry. Far too often, I find it that those of us who are believers still practice idolatry, and we don't know it. But oh. even I practice idolatry when oh. I was, I used to believe in Trinity. That's idolatry. Of course. And I couldn't accept it because I already understood the concept of the cross. It made perfect sense to me. So I, I used it as an understanding visual of who God must be because of I, I used to practice the cross. And uh, that, the it, word, the word, you see the word you just used now? We use it in this world, we use it when a man and a woman. Yeah. That's the concept. This is the understanding of our, of our mind. Right. But that's not the way it is. The way you mention it, that's the way it is. The way you just say now, we commit adultery. We not commit adultery to man. It's not to man, to man and woman. It's to God. It's when we are worshiping Lucifer. in the presence of God. I'm sorry, not... I have to correct. I said idolatry, like idol, idolism. Sorry. Whether idol, idolism or adultery, all of them are in the same bracket. Yeah, right, yeah. The, all of them are in the same bracket. When you worship God with another picture, pictures, or when you, this is why in that same book, Christ, in that same book in the Old Testament, he said, when did I give you a bill of divorce? When did I give your mother a bill of divorce? What that really mean? What that really mean, um, divorce? What divorce mean? Anybody could help me. What divorce mean? 
Break marriage. Break a marriage. With whom we marriage? To God. Now, when you born, right now we born, we each of us have a father. We each of us have a mother. Could you divorce with your mother and your father? Could you? Call it emancipation. What, what, give me more explanation about emancipation. Meaning that uh, there's a bill, there's a, there's a law that allows you to separate from your parents and you become a self, self-proclaimed adult. Yes, is that is a reality? A form of adult, it's a form of divorce. In a sense. What, 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 what is that is true? No. Is, is that is real? No. Why is not real? You can never separate from your parents. Why you can never separate with your parents? Because they already made you. <laughs> why again, that's true. This is true, this is true. But why again you cannot separate from your parents? That's true. That's true. What you say, they made you. But the question go deeper. Why you cannot separate from your parents? Anybody have an answer, please? Why you cannot separate from your parents, no matter what? Why? Anybody could help me? Why you cannot separate from your parents? Why you cannot have any emancipation from your parents? You, you say one word which is true, it made you, that is true, but it's deeper than that. Well, it's made you is a real good, good answer, but I need more. I need, I need something. It made you that's tangible also, but I need something more real. I mean, visually. His or her blood is in your body. His and her blood is in your body. The life that you have, they pass it on to you. Do you see the tie? No matter what, you cannot cut your life from your mother and your father. Because you are your mother and father and your mother and father is you. Oh, understand the, 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 the closeness of that situation, my dear sister, brother. You and God are one. God is in you. How God is in you? Yeah, life. The breath that you take come from him. The life that you take come from him. This life. Do you see, could you separate yourself? He had to do that, but you can't do that. Do you understand the situation between you and your creator? Between you what is what a what what a mother and father we present on earth? What the mother and father represent? I know there are mother who do not act as a mother. There are father who do not act as a father. I understand that, but because. We've been lied, as my dear brother already said before. 
We've been bombarded with so many evil things that cause us to be the way we are. But nevertheless, come to the reality of life. Your mother and your father, you can never separate it from them. You can never separate it from the children that come from you. Therefore, you can never separate it from the creator who made you. You cannot. He could do it. Why God could do it? Why the creator could do it? Creator of all things. That's right. He is powerful. He is, he is, he is unbelievable. The, the greatness of the heavenly father, none of us, none of us have any idea how great he is, how powerful he is. None of us. Uh, I was going to try to close this one. So um, the keys to this scripture, I was trying to focus on the on discerning the spirits. Yes. Understanding that <clears throat> what Craig, what John is telling us is to be be wary that you have you already have the spirit of God in you, mm -hmm. and that what deters, what shares you, which allows you to understand whether or not someone is speaking of God or whether it is not of God, is the thing that is important. That is in everything that is the spirit of God is love. And love is the revealer of all things. Love is the exception to every rule. And sometimes you can acknowledge someone who may even be speaking of the word of God, who may even be preaching Christ. But when you see that preacher is speaking of Christ without the, the spirit of love that doesn't meld with yours, what you're seeing is the Antichrist. And the devil is very wary of that. Now, this part tells us that those who speak the word of Christ are speaking the truth, right? But John is speaking in his time. But he also says that there are many who are false prophets who are already in the world. That was 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. 2,000 years later, we they have become crafty. They have become intelligent, and they have le learned the word of God. And they have learned the, the sciences, and they have learned, and in every in every part of the world, whether it's, whether it's the scientists who tell you that there's no God or the preachers who tell you that God only comes in certain forms or he only loves certain people or he only loves you if you pay this much in tithes or he only loves you if you know how to do this thing with your tongue or these types of things that are designed to separate man from God and tell you I am better than him because I can, I can do this, or you can come to me and you're a, better, you're a better Christian because you do this, or if you know this amount of scripture, if you know these types of things, these are designed to separate you from God, separate you from each other. This is the work of the Antichrist, is not to preach love, it's to preach division. It doesn't have to be hatred. No. It doesn't have to be evil. All it has to be is not God. All it has to be is not love. And that's how the enemy wins. The enemy is not interested in, in killing. He's just interested in you losing. And how he, how he does it is by not allowing you to know the truth or by skewing the truth. You can be on the right precipice. You could be on the border of the truth and still, be, and still fall. You could be right on the tippy toe of God's word and the, the little bit of deception turns you away from God or uses you as, an, as a tool to destroy, to destroy another person. Deter someone else from God. That's the key. The truth of the matter is my own experience is that the word of God is being distorted and, and there's no denying the church itself is dying. The church has been dying for a long time, and it is dying. It is not growing. The word of God is being distorted. That's the facts. So what John is telling us is the truth. 
and is no longer outside of the world, outside of the church, it's inside the church. And you have to know the difference within yourselves to know what is this person's intention. My spirit of God, the spirit as in me is to understand one simple thing, is the love of God. It's a simple thing. I don't need to go to, to, to school to know what he's trying to teach me. I don't need a second book to learn what God is trying to teach me. I don't need a second Bible. No disrespect to Mormons. Sorry. I do not need another Bible. I do not need another word. No. I do not need to pay for something. No. I do not need to seek a certain uh, um, doctrine. No. The word of God is one doctrine. It's no. always the same. No. It was never, it, it never doesn't need um, 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 updating. It was just as simple 3,000 years ago as it will be 3,000 years from now. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Love that God with all thy heart and all thy might. And love with all your heart. It's a simple thing. It's, it's simple and it fixes all things. Beware of the opposite of love. Right. Come in many forms. But the opposite of love is the opposite of God. That is the Antichrist. Anything that deters you from love. Heavenly Father, thank you. We love you, we honor you, we magnify Man. you. Amen, Lord God. Man. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for your knowledge. We thank you for your love. We ask you, Lord God, that you will continue to teach us your ways. Keep us close to you. Keep us in your spirit, Lord God. We know that there are many out there who seek to deter us from you, who seek to rip us out from our closeness, Lord, and tear up our families, tear up our homes, and tear up our world, Lord God. We know, Lord God, that the enemy is vigilant and has done all to destroy. But we ask, Lord God, that you hold us you keep us strong, that you forgive us for our weaknesses, teach us our ways, and you show us where to go. Yes. Move what needs to be removed, add what needs to be added. We thank you once again. We ask, Lord God, that you will bless us, you will teach us, you will fill us up, that you will, you will protect us from the enemy's works, Lord God. Yes, 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 yes. And you will elevate your heart within us. Yes, yes, Lord. Not allow us to elevate ourselves. Yes. We pray, Lord Father God, for the many souls out there who are lost, who do not know your word, who are being directed by others, Lord God, who have evil intent. Hmm. We pray, Lord God, that you will help those souls out there, Lord, who are fallen. Yes. We ask, Lord God, that you will continue to use us as a light, not for our own agenda. No. Your agenda, Lord God. Your agenda. Praise you, we honor you, we magnify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen, hey, guys. So um, that concludes today's Bible study session. We'll be live again next week at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, the link will be um, in the description box as well. You guys can always catch the replay if you missed it. Um, but until then, you guys will be safe and may the spirit of God be with you. Amen. Amen.